Hey, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this shelf. I made this one for a coffee shop. It would work great for a garage, art studio, old folks home, you know, bedpans and the such. Anyways, there's links to all the tools I used in the video description down below. Check them out and don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy. White snow, red sky, red shop for so, so high, blue eyes. A few years ago, I built out a local coffee shop. Now, it was at the beginning of my woodworking career. I still didn't know much about wood and wood movement, and the budget was quite low. So I ended up doing everything out of construction grade fir and pine. Now it turned out great, but I definitely learned a lot about building with construction grade materials during the course of that project. The owner recently contacted me and asked if I'd build them a matching display shelf for all of their retail products. And I thought this might be a good opportunity to show some of my viewers the proper way to build with construction grade materials. Now one of the most important things when building with construction grade material is the material itself. You want to make sure it's either SD or KD lumber. That means it's dry. And then you also want to just test it and make sure. Now I like my wood to be somewhere around 10%. This happens to be between 5 and 7 so it's perfectly dry and we don't have to worry about any nasty wood movement once we get everything together. Now this overall shelf design is about as simple as simple can be. It's going to be comprised of two sides and some internal shelves. So once I got my sides and shelves all cut to size, I laid everything out on the floor. Now I decided I wanted my internal shelves to sit inside the total carcass just a little bit. So I took every shelf and ran it through the table saw, trimming off roughly three quarters of an inch. And then I pre-sanded all of my pieces just to save me a little bit of a headache later on in the process. Next, I took my handy dandy T-square and I marked out where every shelf would land on the outside of my outside pieces. I then marked in an inch and a half from both sides and I drilled a little half inch deep hole with a 3 8 inch Forstner bit. Now it's very important that this is 3 8 of an inch because we are going to be filling these holes later with a 3 8 inch dowel. Also a fun fact, as you can see I'm eyeballing all of these holes. A Forstner bit head is almost exactly a half of an inch. So if you want to go half inch deep, just drill to the top of the head. Then taking the scrap wood from trimming off three quarters of an inch of our shelves, I cut it into little, you know, roughly six inch pieces and using a stapler, I stapled them onto the back of the shelf where we made that original cut. Now you might be wondering, what the heck is this guy doing? Don't worry, it'll all make sense in about two seconds. I wouldn't let you down. With our shelves cut down to the proper width, pre-sanded and those little pieces attached, I lay everything back out on the floor. As you can see, by attaching those little scrap pieces, I can actually hang the shelves from the two sides, keeping them three quarters of an inch off the floor and ensuring that they are perfectly flush with my side pieces. This is the back of the shelf, so once I knock those off, you'll never see the nasty little staple holes I left on each shelf. Then I just take a rubber mallet and a tape measure after loosely clamping everything together, and I just knock each shelf into its appropriate location. I had extra clamps, so I figured, hey, might as well put one clamp for each shelf. If you don't have clamps that long, the little scrap pieces could also be used as calls, and you could just use little clamps right at the source. So with all of our shelves clamped in place, I just use a little square to ensure that they are square to the sides, and then I pre-drill and put a four and a half inch screw through each one of the top holes. Notice I'm not doing the bottom holes yet. I like to do all the top holes first, get the shelf somewhat hooked together, then I remove all my clamps and going back with a square 
to just make sure my shelves are still square, I then attach each shelf through that bottom hole. You also want to make sure that you're sending your screws right in the middle of that pre-drilled hole. You don't want to mar up the outside or else it won't look that great when we fill it with our dowels. Next, taking a hammer, I can very easily knock off each one of those scrap pieces and it really doesn't look half bad even though there's a few staple holes left behind. But that'll be against a wall and you're never gonna see it. So just calm down. Then with all of our shelves attached, I take a piece of 3 8 inch fur dowel that can be picked up at any big box store. And just using a little bit of glue and a flush cut saw, I insert a dowel into each one of those half inch holes and sand it smooth. Then after doing one side, well, I flip it over and I do the same thing to the other side. Man, having some fun. And with that, our shelf is really starting to take shape. In fact, it looks pretty darn good. Good enough to make you wanna dance, am I right? But as you can see, it's got a little bit of wobble. <laughs> oh no, it's ruined. Ah, wasted my time. I'm just kidding, we'll fix it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little toe kick on the bottom. Now this is gonna serve two purposes. Number one, it's gonna keep junk and hair and nasty things from wandering under that shelf but it's also going to keep that shelf from racking back and forth so we cut down a toe kick to fit perfectly in that bottom space and we well test to see if it fits this is the dance i do when i can't find my mallet where's my mallet where's my mallet oh i found it all right, so we tap that toe kick in place, making sure it's nice and tight. The tighter it is, the more it'll prevent that racking back and forth. And then we're also gonna put a piece on the top. Now this will also prevent the racking back and forth and give us a nice little nailer that we can use to attach the entire shelf to the wall. What do you think about that? Pretty good idea, huh? I know. Then we pre-sand all of our pieces. Again, I just like to sand as I go because it makes life easier when we get to finishing. And then using a pocket hole jig, I just throw a few pocket holes in both the top and bottom piece so that I can attach them from the inside and you won't see any fasteners on the outside. So I get that bottom piece in place as well as the top piece. And then wouldn't you know it, just like that, our shelf is pretty flippin' done. The only thing left to do is stand it up, have a nice look at it, and then of course what I like to do after I finish any piece is lay on it and take a nap. But I had my foreman sneak in and check on me, and he found me sleeping on the job. Gosh, what a strict guy. Then finally I just wiped the entire thing down with some Minwax Wipe on Poly, quick and easy but I won't bore you with all that detail. Well, thought that wall was farther away than it was. I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. And while you're at it, hit that little notification bell. That'll let you know when I put out new videos. And you might want to check out some of these other videos floating around my head. All right. Dude, you just ruined that whole thing. No, I didn't. Man, I'm gonna do it all over again. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. You were done. I was not done. <laughs>